Welcome back, first grade boys and girls. Thank you for joining me today for Unit 2, Module A, Lesson 1. I'm so excited to share a new book with you today. Today we will be reading the story, A Fine, Fine School, by Sharon Creech and pictures by Harry Bliss. Good readers understand that key details help them determine the central message in a text. We are going to read a new story and identify story elements. Remember that the story elements are characters, setting, and events. Characters or who or what the story is about. Setting is when and where the story takes place. And events are what happens. Our learning intention and success criteria for today says, In this lesson, we are learning how readers can identify story elements. We will know we are successful when we can identify who the characters are, which is who the story is about, identify the setting, which is where the story takes place, and identify the events, which are what happens in the story. We will be reading the entire story of A Fine, Fine School by Sharon Creech and illustrated by Harry Bliss. Mr. Keene was a principal who loved his school. Every morning he strolled down the hallway and saw the children in their classes. He saw them learning shapes and colors and numbers and letters. He saw them reading and writing and drawing and painting. He saw them making dinosaurs and forts and pyramids. Oh, he would say, aren't these fine children? Aren't these fine teachers? Isn't this a fine, fine school? Near Mr. Keene's school, Tilly lived with her parents and her brother and her dog, Beans, in a small house next to a big tree. On Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, Tilly went off to school. Boys and girls, did you notice our new vocabulary word highlighted in the text? The word learning means the process of gaining new understanding, knowledge, behavior, skills, values, attitudes, and preferences as a result of teaching. In the sentence, he saw them learning shapes and colors and numbers and letters. The word learning means that Mr. Keene noticed the children were gaining knowledge about their shapes and colors and numbers and letters. They were learning new things from their teachers. Just like we learn new things every day in our classroom. At school, Tilly learned her shapes and colors and numbers and letters. Sometimes when she saw Mr. Keene standing in the hallway, he waved. Aren't these fine children, he said to himself. Aren't these fine teachers? Isn't this a fine, fine school? On the weekends, Saturday and Sunday, Tilly climbed her favorite tree. 
and she took beans on walks and threw him sticks. And she pushed her brother on a swing and tried to teach him how to skip. And I can see that Tilly is trying to climb her favorite tree. And she says, I'm stuck, get help. Then I can see Tilly is taking beans on a walk. And Tilly says, let go now, beans. And at the very bottom in this illustration, I can see her brother is trying to learn how to skip. And he's thinking to himself, be one with the skip. But on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, Tilly went off to school. Beans and her brother did not like to see her go. Hurry, hurry, hurry home, her brother called. One day, Mr. King called all the students and teachers together and said, This is such a fine, fine school. I love this school. Let's have more school. From now on, let's have school on Saturdays too. The teachers and the students did not want to go to school on Saturdays, but no one knew how to tell Mr. Keene that. He was so proud of the children and the teachers of all the learning they were doing every day. Did you notice another vocabulary word, boys and girls? In the sentence, he was so proud of the children and the teachers of all the learning they were doing every day. The word proud means feeling pleasure or satisfaction especially with a person's own or someone else's achievement. The word proud in this sentence means that Mr. Keene was very happy with how they were doing in school. Just like I'm proud of all the hard work you have been doing with your reading lessons. And so that Saturday, Tilly set off for school. But it's Saturday. What about the swings? Her brother called. The following month, Mr. Keene announced, This is such a fine, fine school. I love this school. Let's have more school. From now on, let's have school on Sundays too. The teachers and the students did not want to go to school on Sundays, but no one knew how to tell Mr. Keene that. He was so proud of the children and the teachers, of all the learning they were doing every day. And so that Sunday, Tilly set off for school. But it's Sunday. What about the skipping? Her brother called. The following month, Mr. King called everyone together and said, This is such a fine, fine school. I love this school. Let's have more school. From now on, let's have school on holidays too on Easter and Ramadan and Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah, on all the holidays, on every calendar. The teachers and the students did not want to go to school on holidays, but no one knew how to tell Mr. Keene that. 
He was so proud of the children and the teachers, of all the learning they were doing every day. And so, on Christmas, Tilly set off for school. But it's Christmas! What about Christmas? Her brother called. The following month, Mr. King called everyone together and said, This is such a fine, fine school. I love this school. Let's have more school. From now on, let's have school in the summer too, all summer long, every single day. How much we will learn, he said. We can learn everything. We will learn all about numbers and letters, colors and shapes, the Romans and the Egyptians and the Greeks. We will learn about dinosaurs and castles and, and everything. We will learn. The teachers and the students did not want to go to school on Saturdays and Sundays and holidays and all summer long every single day. But no one knew how to tell Mr. King that. He was so proud of the children and the teachers of all the learning they were doing every day. And so, on the first day of summer, Tilly set off for school. But it's summer! What about summer? Her brother called. And that day, Tilly went to see Mr. King. She stood in his office in front of his desk. What a fine, fine school this is, Mr. King said. What amazing things everyone is learning. Yes, Tilly said. We certainly are learning some amazing things. A fine, fine school, Mr. Keene said. But, Tilly said, not everyone is learning. What? Mr. Keene said. He looked very worried. Who? isn't learning. Tell me and I will see that they learn. My dog Beans hasn't learned how to sit, Tilly said, and he hasn't learned how to jump over the creek. Oh, Mr. Keen said, and my little brother hasn't learned how to swing or skip. Oh, Mr. Keene said. And I, she said. But you go to school, Mr. Keene said, to our fine, fine school. True, Tilly said. But I haven't learned to climb very high in my tree. And I haven't learned how to sit in my tree for a whole hour. Oh, Mr. Keene said. And then I can see from the illustration, there's Tilly's brother and Beans is pushing him. And he says, wrong way, Beans. That day, Mr. Keene walked up and down the halls, looking at the children and the teachers. Up and down he walked, up and down up and down. The next morning, Mr. King called everyone together. The children and the teachers were very worried. Mr. King said, This is a fine, fine school with fine, fine children and fine, fine teachers, but not everyone is learning. The children and the teachers were very, very worried. Mr. Keen said, there are dogs who need to learn how to sit and how to jump creeks. What did he mean? 
Was he going to make their dogs come to school? There are little brothers and sisters who need to learn how to swing and how to skip. What did he mean? Was he going to make their younger brothers and sisters come to school too? The children and the teachers were very, very, very worried. And you, all of you, children and teachers, you need to learn how to climb a tree and sit in it for an hour, Mr. Keene said. The children and the teachers were very worried. And I can see from the illustration, the kids are standing in line to climb the tree. And Mr. Keene says, 20 minutes to go. And so from now on, we will not have school on Saturdays or Sundays or holidays or in the summer. A huge, enormous, roaring cheer soared up to the ceiling and floated out the windows so that everyone in the town heard the fine, fine children and the fine, fine teachers shout, Fine! 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 And the fine, fine children and the fine, fine teachers lifted Mr. Keene up and they carried him down the hallway and out the doors and through the town, up and down, in and out, and everywhere they went. The people said, what a fine, fine school with such fine, fine teachers and fine, fine children and a fine, fine principal. Now let's check our understanding of the story we read today with some comprehension questions. The questions that I'll be asking you today, boys and girls, go with page six and seven. So we can always look at page six and seven, which is on the top of our page. You can use the text or the illustrations. This would be a good place to pause the video so you could get your paper and pencil ready to write your answers down. Also remember, boys and girls, you can always pause the video to write your answers down after each question. Our first question says, Mr. Keene walks slowly down the hallway every morning. Why do you think Mr. Keene does this? So looking at the illustrations, why would Mr. Keene walk very slowly down the hallway? What do you think, boys and girls? This would be a great place to pause the video to write down your answers. Our next question says, how does Mr. Keene feel about his school? How do you think that Mr. Keene feels about his school. What does he think about his students and teachers and all the learning they are doing? On our last question, the author uses the word fine four times in the last paragraph. So let's go up and find where it says in the last paragraph, oh, he would say, aren't these fine children? Aren't these fine teachers? Isn't this a fine, fine school? Why do you think she does this? Why does the author use the word fine so many times in the last paragraph? Now we've come to our writing activity for your journal today. Remember, boys and girls, this is an optional activity, but if you would like to get your journals and pencils ready, 
then I would be happy for you to join me. In your journal writing activity today, you will write your opinion about the story we read, A Fine, Fine School. Think about what happened in the story. How did you feel about what happened? Think about Mr. Keem and what he says and does in the story. Then ask yourself, what do I think about Mr. Keem? To answer the question, begin your sentence with, I think, and write your opinion. After you have written your opinion, make a drawing that illustrates your opinion. Remember, an opinion is how you feel or think about something. So, we won't find our answer in the book because only you know how you feel. Now, let's review our learning intention and success criteria for today and see how well we did. How do you think you did today, boys and girls? In this lesson, we are learning how readers can identify story elements. We will know we are successful when we can identify who the characters are, which is who the story is about, identify the setting, which is where the story takes place, and identify the events which are happening in the story. So let's see. We had to identify three things today in our story to be successful. Do you remember who the characters were in our story? Do you remember where the story was taking place? Do you remember some of the events that happened in the story? I bet you did a fabulous job today. Thank you so much for spending your reading time with me today. I look forward to sharing reading time again tomorrow with you. Have a great afternoon, boys and girls.